The Battle of the Bulge was Adolf Hitler's last ditch scramble to try to halt the Allies' advance across Europe and hold them up long enough that he could defeat the Russians and then turn back to the Allies. When you look at the guns of the Battle of the Bulge, it, really they're the standard infantry weapons of the German Army, the Wehrmacht, and the U.S. Army in the winter of 1944 and 1945. The U.S. Army was built around uh, the U.S. rifle, Cal 30, the M1 Garand, uh, as the primary infantry rifle. Uh, support troops, uh, guys who didn't need an infantry rifle were carrying M1 carbines. The standard squad automatic weapon or automatic rifle uh, was the Browning automatic rifle, the M1918A2. Uh, and then also in the support role, uh, you had the Browning 1919 A4 machine gun, the 1919 A6 machine gun, and they were also using water-cooled Brownings, the M1917 A1. So in the weeks before the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge, the men of the 109th Infantry Regiment, 28th Infantry Division, occupied positions on the hill behind me here. They could look across the Ur River, directly across it, and into Germany. And so for a period of weeks, these men sat up on that hilltop, looking down across the river into Germany. There had been patrols to the other side, but so far nothing meaningful. It stayed like that until December 16th when the Battle of the Bulge began. As it had been planned, the German attack started on 16 December 1944. And at that time, there was a foggy, it was overcast. The Americans couldn't use their air superiority, had no idea that the Germans were coming in. Many of the American troops, the first inkling that they had was hearing the rumbling of German tank engines going past their positions. The kinds of conditions that were experienced in the Battle of the Bulge brought out the worst in every gun. Anything that is even marginal, uh, becomes uh, deficient. And that's when only the guns that people like John Browning or John Garand uh, designed, that's when those guns shine. We often forget about the fact that the M1 rifle had its shortcomings. Shortcomings that proved themselves during the developmental phase, and the M1 rifle was very fortunate in that it was developed and then introduced initially during a time of peace. There were bugs that had to be worked out of that system, and those bugs were ultimately worked out, so that by the time that the M1 rifle went to war in 1941, it was ready for war. Even the deep, deep cold of the bleak midwinter of the Battle of the Bulge. Although the conditions were horrible for the GIs fighting in the Ardennes, the M1 rifle proved to be extremely effective. One soldier who used the M1 was Staff Sergeant Day G. Turner of the 319th Infantry, 80th Infantry Division. Day Turner used his M1 rifle to put accurate fire on the Germans. He even engaged in close combat, bayoneting them in an action that would eventually nominate and earn him the Medal of Honor. Sadly, Day Turner was killed one month to the day after his Medal of Honor action. Coming up, Seven Roads to Hell. Want to know what's happening at American Rifleman? Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We'll be right back. We went to the vault. We first went as far as the first part of Germany. And we were there and we were told to stay there. And at a certain point, we were called and said, you will leave tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. to go fight in the bulge. It was hell moving because the bomb strafed until we got to the battles in Belgium. At the outset of the Battle of the Bulge on December 16th, German units streamed across northern Luxembourg, approaching the town that's just down the road that way and out of sight, Bastogne in Belgium. 
The United States didn't want the enemy to capture Bastogne and the seven roads that radiated into and away from it. And so we rushed units from the 9th Armored Division, the 10th Armored Division, and of course the 101st Airborne Division to the city to defend it. Well, as soon as units arrived in Bastogne, certain teams were sent out to, de to defend certain critical and crucial road junctions. One of the teams came here to Noville. That team was led by an officer from the 10th Armored Division by the name of William R. DeSobri. When Team DeSobri arrived here at Noville, they established a roadblock and blocking positions that would prevent the Germans from moving in toward the city. However, the Germans ultimately closed with and made contact with Team DeSobri here at Noville, leading to a very violent battle. This violent battle, however, bought time for the defenders in the city of Bastogne. And in the end, the Germans were not able to capture that town. And it was all because of teams like Team DeSobri coming to critical and crucial road junctions, like the road junction here at the city of Noville. When the uh, replacements came in, we were beefed up like about 170 men, and we made the attack into Noville. And when we did, the Germans came over the hill, and they had armor. And in four, four hours, uh, we were reduced to 58 men. And then the whole battalion, we had uh, 13 officers and uh, 199 enlisted men killed plus wounded. Bastogne was an extremely critical road junction. Don Burgett titled his book, Seven Roads to Hell. There are seven roads into Bastogne, and the Germans needed them if they were going to move past their objectives. And when they moved toward Bastogne, of course, armored spearheads. But the small arms there, the guns carried by the German infantrymen, they were the MG-42 machine gun, the MG-34 machine gun, the MP-40 submachine gun, and of course, the Sturmgewehr 44. At this stage of the war, though, you didn't have nearly as many manually operated bolt-action rifles organic to German infantry platoons and battalions. Instead, what you're beginning to see is the introduction of the, the new weapon, the Sturmgewehr, the Maschine Pistol 44, the MP-44 as we know it. Well, the MP44, a uh, select fire carbine feeding from a 30 round detachable box magazine, firing the 7.92 by 33 millimeter um, cartridge, which is also often referred to as 8 millimeter Kurtz. This is a firearm that equipped a large number of the German troops from the Army, from the, from the Luftwaffe, and from the Waffen SS who participated in the Battle of the Bulge. And as German troops closed in on the blocking position that was established by Team de Sobri at the town of Noville on December 19th, many of them carried the awesome and powerful Sturmgewehr. Now, the Sturmgewehr had a number of advantages that uh, no other gun in World War II shared. It was uh, selective fire for an intermediate cartridge. It had a 30 round magazine. It was an individual infantry weapon that uh, ideally every single soldier in, in the uh, unit could be armed with. The Germans never quite worked the bugs out of the gun. Tosobri and the other GIs in Noville were able to slow the Germans down. They were able to inflict punishment on them. But they were simply outgunned. There was too much German armor, and they had to fight a delaying action, which they did. Their delaying actions allowed more American reinforcements to enter the fight. 